Yeah. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego. I'm back. Oh, yeah, we back with some more boxing. JJ, I've decided not to leave this town. Maybe I can stay and find some other nice people who will like me and accept me for who I am. Tony was good. The Vampire Street. Chesame, yo, what's poppin'? Everybody checked in. Smash the like button, will ya? Man. I'm out here in LA. We condoed up. You know, this year we trying different stuff. Like, I'm gonna try different things that, you know, I put off. So I'm in the Airbnb. I got a I got a little condo in LA, downtown LA. It's cool. But I was always kind of weird with getting um, <clears throat> an Airbnb. I never tried it. So that was one of the things that I was gonna try. But so far, so good. My first experience with Airbnb was a success. Smash the like button. It's not gonna be too long of a vampire stream because I'm exhausted, but I wanted to check in with everybody, talk this good old boxing. Gang, gang, shout out to Maya, what up? I'm just out here in LA, living the life. Listen, I was on assignment, so I don't know, I didn't really get, it wasn't like the standard fight week for me because you know, I was hired to um, just help out. You know, I was with my man, Joey Spencer. I got some behind the scenes stuff with the camp. He looked real good out there. I don't know, let's try to wait for some more people to join so we can talk. Like I said, I just want to talk about the night. I'm having a good time out here in LA. We just, we working. <clears throat> like I said, it hasn't been a typical fight week. It's been, you know, I've been on time with everything. We're getting real organized. Just 2019, we're doing it right. But it, it wasn't like the standard fight week. I was doing a lot of filming and, you know, everything's good. It's, it's all a process. And it makes me respect what these fighters go through. You spend, you spend a week with the fighter, you know, roughly and see it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, from medicals to the weigh-ins, the press conference, the fighter meetings, to the backstage and locker room, the actual fight, you know, all this for, you know, possibly 12 rounds, maybe less. Incredible, these guys are highly disciplined. I respect it, I respect the grind. I learned from the grind. I learned from hustles and other people who hustle. Shout out from East LA. Anthony, I see you. Appreciate you. Jose did not do much in the fight versus Caleb. He did not take advantage of fighting on the inside. Listen, um, we the gang gang. I want to get my thoughts. My thoughts, first of all, I want to talk about Joey Spencer. I've known, I've known him for a while and I'm seeing him develop as a young man. And I like what I'm seeing. Like he, his frame looks like he's filling out, right? He said, ego, what up? I got school in five hours. Hey, the vampire stream. I like what I'm seeing. Like when I met Joey, may, like, see, this is the thing. There's a lot of people they want to jump on bandwagons when somebody's already successful. My advice to you guys is, um, this is this is not them speaking, this is me speaking. Support the people before they blow up. Don't be one of those people who, you know, once they've already achieved a world title, once they've achieved major success, now all of a sudden you want to be on the bandwagon. You know, like the Golden State Warriors or something. Once there, I remember when the Warriors weren't that great, you know, when they had Chris Mullins and Mitch Richmond and stuff. 
I'm from the Bay, you know, so I've been out in that area. There weren't that many Raiders. I mean, there weren't that many uh, Warriors fans. So don't do that. You know, support these people from the ground up so you feel part of their journey, part of their story. You know, Joey, he has a good team around him. I've, I've put you guys on this. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I told you, did, he doesn't, his attitude, his demeanor, I, I don't, I'm not a fake person, you know? I, I just, I can't be fake. And I told you guys for a while that, that his brain, his boxing brain, his dedication, his mind, he could go far. He can go as far as, as he um, allows himself, you know? He was, all, he was telling me, we had some conversations today. I mean, not today, um, earlier this week. And he's just talking about like, oh yeah, Mayweather just makes adjustment. And we, like, he's always, shown that knack and i think he you know i'm proud i'm proud to see he, he's inching closer and closer to his goals and is getting bigger i remember being when i i interviewed him for a ward fight a while ago and nobody you know bothered him in the mgm we were in the mgm but now people are like oh hey man i caught your fight that was dope, good stuff. You know, little kids are like shadow bot. You'll see some of it in the behind the scenes that I captured, but it's, it's a good feeling to see it all come through. Like, I feel like this is one of the, I don't know, you get certain ones, like I'm sure Ellie can vouch for this because he he watched Mikey Garcia for in that gym for a while. So there's certain fighters that you, um, I don't know, that you connect with and you feel more a part of their story, so yeah. That's that's one of them. I, I like seeing him develop as a young man. But yeah, don't be a bandwagon person. Get behind these guys. Same thing with Caleb Plant. I told y'all on my channel, like I keep it so transparent with you guys. I told y'all Caleb Plant is nice. He's nice with it. And he's another person. That's why I had to come to this card. I had to come to this card. And I'm not saying it's like me, they did the work, but I, I've been vouching for him. I've been telling you guys to check for him. Like, check for these. I had to come to this card. I told you for a while, Caleb Plant, Sweet Hands. That's a perfect name. He's nice in there. Um, I can even tell that he was a student of the game from when I used to interview him back in the day. Caleb Plant was talking about, I like watching Rigandow and Floyd and Roy Jones. You, you know, he was talking about like actual boxing stuff. A lot of you guys get gassed up, and I hate to say it. Well, I don't really hate to say it, I don't really care. But a lot of you guys get gassed up into what like HBO Boxing says, or this and that. And, and like, you know, Jim Lampley was doing like the Gotti list and stuff like that. Those guys don't usually last. The guys that last in the sport are the guys who refine their skills, hone their skills, and they're complete fighters. And they study the game and respect the game. If you come in one dimensional, that might work for some odd time. But when you get in there with somebody who has um, a bit more than you, it's not gonna work. So I always respect the sweet science and people who, I like different styles. Like, Madonna's one of my favorite fighters and he's not really like a super technical guy. So, you know, we all have like little people that we like, but I always respect you know, some people say, oh, this person clinched or he ran. Man, fuck all that. It's, it's about winning. You got to capture that W. Yeah, you're right. 168 is stacked and Caleb Plant is there. Um, I was very impressed with his performance. I thought he boxed beautifully. Yeah, Madonna got them overhand rights. Madonna looked like he's 213, though. So I don't know if he can come back. But um, really impressed with Caleb Plant. Shout out to him. Um, I was in his dressing room uh, post fight. You know, I got some little little ego exclusive. Not too many people, media people were were back there. But he proposed to his girlfriend, so congrats to them on that. He got a, a world title now. This is what he's dreamed about. So I was really happy for him. Um, I remember interviewing him. He, he has a very sad story about his daughter. Rest in peace to Aaliyah. And he's been dreaming about this and talking about this moment for some odd time. And tonight was that moment for him. That's why he kind of, when they announced his name, he fell to his, 
is a need, his need. David Benavides is calling out Caleb Plant. I know, because I was standing in front of him and I was filming it. So I know David Benavides called him out. Benavides, I like him. He's, he's, he's a good fighter. He has a good frame, good fighter, very young. But he has to, you know, he has to come back. He's, he's fighting on the Errol Spence card. He says his opponent is not like, it's not 100% like determined that it's going to be Jay Leon Love, but he's going to be fighting on that card as a co-feature, which is very good for him. Mexican-American, you know, out of Arizona, fighting on a, a card in Texas with a lot of Hispanic, a dense Hispanic population. And it's just a big card. I talked to Mikey Garcia today and uh, got some stuff. Like, you know, we were asking some questions. Mikey said it's the biggest fight card this year. And, you know, I don't, I really wouldn't argue with him. It's, it's, it's one of them for sure. You know, I don't know what else trumps it. Canelo, Triple G3, if they fight, Broner, Pacquiao, I don't know. I don't know if any of those fights um, trump the expectations of Mikey Arrow. So that's a good card to be featured on. David Benavides, he had that little coke run in or whatever. Hopefully he learned his lesson, but he's no longer a champion. So he has to, you know, kind of get back in the swing of things. Not saying that he's going to be a different fighter, but, you know, I just want to see how he bounces back. Caleb Plant just won a world title, so I'm sure, I don't know, maybe Uzkadegi is in the pictures for a rematch, or maybe he takes a tune-up, or, you know, I don't know. But I give props to Plant, because speaking of tune-up, he said specifically that he wasn't taking no tune-up. I asked him, he said, I don't want no tuna. He messed up his hand. You know, he messed up his hand and he could have lost his place in line and been like, oh, I'll fight, you know, later for the title. But he's like, nah, I don't want no tune up. I don't need no tune up. And he showed that. Listen, I know it's late, but we got to get these likes up. I'm, I'm up here exhausted. Should be sleeping right now. I've been working all day. Um, if y'all could show love in the, in the like section, greatly appreciate it. But I'm just happy, man, I'm happy. I think boxing's in a good spot. And <laughs> I told y'all, a lot of y'all don't know shit about boxing. I try to tell y'all, a lot of y'all really don't know shit about boxing. I was reading comments. I told you, people said, who are you picking? I said, Caleb Plant, that's my guy. I think he can pull it off. I think he's slick enough, well-rounded overall. He's just a good fighter. You can't, you can have power, but you have to be able to hit it. You got to be able to hit your target. And Jose Uzcategui in the first half especially was having major difficulty trying to connect. And Caleb Plant, AKA Sweet Hands was making him miss and making him pay and making him look kind of wild. Like he, Uzkadegi, he was like missing wildly. He was throwing some heat, he was throwing smoke, trying to like really, you know, do something big. But in the first half, he was just missing like crazy. Caleb Plant was like, like looking to the side, you know, just Floyd Mayweather, Billy Joe Saunders-ish. He was trying to embarrass him. But it got interesting. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. It got um, interesting late because you could tell that Caleb Plant, he faded a little bit. And there was one moment, I, it was really hard. That I've never been, I never covered a fight at that particular venue. Um, but I was like kind of catty corner and it was, it was kind of hard. So I really don't have the rounds memorized, but Round nine, ten, somewhere around there. It looked like um, Caleb got caught, maybe with like a left or something. It looked like he was buckled a little bit, but you know he did his thing and he was firing back. He never, there was never a moment where, and that's what I like. Caleb has some shit you can't teach. Caleb Plant, even in duress or distress or whatever, he was still, he was throwing his count. Round nine, see, I'm pretty good. That was just off the top of the dome. Yeah, it looked like he got buckled on that. But, I mean, look at the composure. Look how he handled himself. He didn't. He wasn't like, like not trying to throw anyone under the bus, but like, look at Amir Khan. Amir Khan got hurt by Samuel Vargas, and 
it was he got dropped by Samuel Vargas, but then he got um, he got what's it called hurt again in like round eleven maybe of the Samuel Vargas fight, and I didn't like how Khan was like spilling about and like swaying. Caleb Plant wasn't doing that. Even if he was buckled to rock, very composed, he just, it, you know, it's just like we've been through this drill before. A very mature type of fighter. And I like to see that. And like I said, he didn't buckle and then just concede. He was still throwing some, some nasty counters even after that moment in round nine. So just, he showed he's a seasoned fighter. I, I like what I seen from Caleb Plant. And I can't even really fault him for like fading a little bit in the second half because Jose Uzcadeg is good and he's very relentless. He has good power and this dude was obviously well conditioned because he was he was performing at a high intensity, missing like crazy in the first half and he still kept coming. That the way he was, some of them early rounds went. Some guys would have mentally checked out. So it, it goes to show you that Uzcadeg is a good fighter. He's everything. They say he will. Canelo will destroy Plant. Canelo's probably gonna fight Triple G. Y'all say stupid shit, bro. You know, Canelo don't have nothing to do with Caleb Plant. Canelo doesn't even, he had one fight at 168. Why didn't he fight Caleb Plant? Then? Well, you know, I don't, I'm not even here to even give a fight prediction on that. Cause obviously Canelo is probably not talking about fighting him. Why do you fight Rocky Fielding then? Canelo, you see, these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. Canelo struggles with movers. So if 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 Caleb just starts moving and pot shotting, then Canelo and his slow feet are gonna have problems. I fuck with Canelo. I think he's a terrific fighter, but that's that's we're talking about totally different fights. You know, Uzkadegi, I was I was near them. I'm a big dude, and I was around these guys. These guys are, I've been next to Canelo. I've been next to Caleb, Jose Uzkadegi. They're definitely bigger than Canelo. You know, height and all that. The reach is probably bigger. We're talking about two different things. You know, Canelo shouldn't even be in the picture. Like, he, what does he have to do with this fight? Like I said, he fought one guy who'd been knocked out at 168. But once again, some of y'all say stupid shit. You know, gassed up because he beat Rocky Fielding. Like, that's that's dope, you know, but stop hating ego. Hey, do we have any shooters that could block Silent OG? I'm, I'm done with it. Like I said, I'm tired. I don't have time to, to be going back and forth. I ain't going back and forth. Do we have any, shout out to James Souza. Just clap that man. Talking about stop hating. All right. Anyway, Uzkadegi, he's, he's, he's a good fighter. That's what it is. He was relentless, um, still brought pressure. And I like fights like that because when you're dealing with a guy like Uzkadegi, he's not giving up. You know, he's not going to give up. Look like he has a solid chin. So there's always going to be an element of danger as long as he's he's in there and he's pressing forward because, like I said, some of the things that were happening to him, getting knocked down twice, missing wildly, and then Caleb, like, taunting him, that might have broke somebody's spirit. But Uskata, he's a, he's a good fighter. He's a real fighter. He's a, he has amateur experience. That type of stuff shows up. If, if he, like, Jose Uzkadegi probably wouldn't be as good if he didn't have the amateur experience. But he's had so many fights that, you know, this is second nature to him. So, um, I'm impressed. You know, it was, a, it was a terrific fight. Definitely a fight I was glad to be there live. You know, Al Heyman killing the game. Haney was a little slug. I seen Hey, I watched it. I was I, I watched it with Joey Spencer and uh, his brother and everybody. Um, Devin Haney looked good, but my thing is like this: Devin Haney, I think, I think he fought almost like he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Like people said, like a lot of people were comparing Mason Menard getting knocked out and doing a Heisman that shit with um, 
with Teofimo Lopez, and he had just recently fought Devin Haney and lost to him, Mason Menard. So I, I feel like Devin Haney kind of took that angst and, and energy because people were comparing that performance, saying Devin Haney's power wasn't all that, you know, and I think he kind of fought the wrong fight a little bit with the dude because the guy just looked, he didn't look better than Devin, but he's, he's kind of awkward, awkward enough to, to, you know, awkward enough to, to make some of the rounds a little bit awkward. And it looked like, Devin was just kind of more or less trying to prove that he had power or like walk him down. But, you know, he, he got the victory. I'm, I'm sure he'll learn from it. And he, you know, he was well conditioned because he, he nearly got him out of there. Dude, I don't even know the dude's name, but the dude I think was undefeated and he nearly got him out of there in the final round. So shout out to Haney for his performance. He's young. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like super young. So he needs fights like that. Was the whole event lit? Yeah, man. I was impressed, bro. Everyone in the media was talking about it was a good fight. It was, it was just a good fight. I never really, the the venue was set up kind of, kind of weird, to be honest. You know, but it was, man, I told y'all, Al Heyman's killing the game. The thing I like about PBC fights too, like, no disrespect, I cover anybody's fights, any any fight that's worth covering, you know, whatever the fans want me to cover. But the thing I like about PBC fights is you see the the PBC family and the support system is there. Like, you, you'll see people like, you know, Errol Spence, Sean Porter, Kenny Porter, David Benavides. Like, even if guys don't, like David Benavides, of course, he's probably like scoping the winner. You know, he's probably scouting. But you still seen people like that really don't have nothing to do with it that were there. And I like that. Leo Santa Cruz, Mikey Garcia, you know, Paulie Malinaji was there. Just a lot of people. Do you think Haney working on his promotional side of business affecting him in the ring? Nah. Cause I think he's Haney, that's the imprint, but I don't think he, he has money. Devin Haney been having money. You know, look at his whips and stuff, his Instagram. So he already have money. He been having money. So I, I doubt he's the, like, the only person. He probably has a team helping him, helping, like, promote, you know, push. So I don't think it's, like, taken away. And he's a hard worker, so. No. I think he just kind of fought, like, trying to prove something. He was just trying to walk him down, show people a different side of him. But I think he picked an awkward guy to do it with. And the guy was tough enough and awkward enough to, to not get knocked out. Oh, oh man. I'm about to cut this, cut this short in a minute. Rignell got a first round knockout. I mean, it was, it was expected. Like his opponent had four losses in a row. And I think some of them were by knockout. It's a guy from Mexico. But that's at this point, that's what Rigging Out needs. New promotional deal, new outfit with being with PBC family, Al Heyman. You know, he needed, and he's been, he ain't fought since the Lomachenko fight. They fought December, whenever it was, but it's been, been a minute. Like December 2017, I think. So he ain't fought in a minute. So that's the type of fight that he needs to come back to, but Rigadow looks sharp. Rigadow, I like how he keep I, how he keeps his hand up, and his left is like he just keep that on deck, waiting for you. Rigadow's left, he got one of the best lefts, you know, outside of Pacquiao. Him and, and Pacquiao, um, I'm talking about like kind of more straighter punches, not like just hooks. Pacquiao, Edislandi Lada. And Lada, Edislandi Lada and Rigandau, and Adonis, you know, I want to wish him a speedy recovery. They got some some beautiful left hands. Still so disappointed Rigandau quit like that versus Loma. I mean, get over it. It is what it is. He lost. But the bottom line is this there would be more fighters not looking their best if they jumped up two weight classes. So. You know, get disappointed at the other fighters who 
who have opportunities, but they never challenge themselves by moving up. Kayla Plant was looking sweet in their white chocolate. That's what I'm saying, man. The move, the, the boy was moving. He he was he was, and I thought, in my honest opinion, I thought Kayla Plant was fighting a risky fight because he wasn't in the first half. He was he was banging and in, in trading pause, and he was trained it, and he was like standing his ground. And I'm like, damn, Jose was kind of he's dangerous. Caleb Plant didn't give a fuck about none of that. So it, it paid off because he stood his ground and he, he banked a lot of rounds. Caleb Plant shut a lot of mouths, you know, because people were saying all types of shit. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know who's Kadegi had so many, like, fans or whatever. But there, go just look at my videos. People were like, oh, who's Kadegi? He's going to knock him out and... He's going to knock Caleb's sweet ass out and, you know, sweet hands out. and They were saying all types of stuff. But another thing I was hearing from a lot of the fans that don't know shit about boxing is that Caleb Plant ain't got no power and he got no pop. And won't, won't, won't. Well, guess what? Mr. No Pop was the only one that created knockdowns in this fight. So once again, a lot of y'all don't know shit about boxing. How come the guy who had no pop and no power dropped a known power guy twice and don't tell me because he was off balance who cares that's his bad he still got dropped twice Caleb Plant was looking awesome in that first half of the fight um guy got, got a little you know he was in the trenches a little bit in the second half but it wasn't like nothing crazy round nine I think he got clipped and, and maybe hurt but he, he's still well composed. Yeah, man. I knew Caleb had it in, man. Like I, I've been doing it, like interviews with him for a minute. And I remember he told me, he was like, man, I'm so serious about, it. I want a title. I just need the opportunity. And he like took his glasses off. Does it look like I'm joking? He's like, man, I'm I'm being so serious. Damn, somebody got blocked. Yeah, I think it was an uppercut he got caught with. It's boxing, you're gonna get hit in 12 rounds. But a lot of y'all motherfuckers said he was gonna get knocked out. That didn't happen. It was a tough fight though, you know. I don't think it was like like an easy fight, but he was styling on that boy in the first half for sure. But having a guy in front of you who's a little bit bigger, who's a big puncher and relentless and tough, you know, you're probably bound to get a little bit tired, but he, he kept it together. He, he, he stayed glued. I like that, very composed performance, very mature performance. You know, and he got two knockdowns. Need them funny posts? I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, man, I'm, it was a good fight. I liked it. I, I thought it was a real good fight. I don't know what, where they go next and what happens, but um, if they do a rematch or whatever, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, man, I'm just out here. I'm in the Airbnb, condo ego. Yeah, Caleb, he looks sharp and he was well conditioned himself. Very good fight. Ugh. I'm about to wrap it up. I'm so tired right now. Oh, and see, this is the other thing, Al Heyman killing. Name a DAZN fight that you felt was like that. You know what I mean? That was on free TV. Hopefully it did good ratings. That was on Fox, regular Fox, for the world to see. And it was a good fight. Caleb Benavides, that's a good fight. But, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know that Caleb Plant would have the same exact game plan. I think he would 
you know, move and it's hard to explain. This was his first opportunity and Uzkadegi was kind of like a boogeyman. He's a guy you don't really want to fight unless you have to fight him type of thing. You know, like he looked real good with versus Darrell. Um, then he stopped Darrell in the rematch. So, you know, he had developed a pretty good reputation. I know some people are trying to hate now and say he didn't look good in his last performance. So, man, who cares? Kovalev didn't look great versus Isaac Chalimba, but then he fought a very good fight versus Andre Ward. You know, that was very competitive. I thought Ward beat him, but still, Kovalev was really competitive. So, it, usually guys get up for fights that are like this. Like a guy with a name, a guy, you know, they get up for the the better fights. I've seen guys where they they look okay against like a mediocre person, and then when they up their level of competition, that's where you get the best of them. I mean, look at Tyson Fury. I think Tyson Fury did better than with Deontay Wilder than he did um, Safari Safari and Francisco Pianetta. You know what I'm saying? He looked more like on point. Light heavyweight division is dead. I don't agree with that. You got Joe Smith Jr. You got Badu Jack about to fight Marcus Brown next week. You know, you got Vodstick who beat Adonis. Um, you got Better Biv. You got Dimitri Bivol just beat Jean Pascal. How's that dead? You got Anthony Yard. Yeah, I don't agree with that, but that's just me. Yeah, I heard Yard might fight somebody, but it's like kind of a step up for who he's been fighting recently. Yeah, I'm about to tap out. I'm tired, man. I got to get up early and check out. Um, yeah, it's Broner Pacquiao week. So, you know, I'm going to be covering that fight too. This is crazy, bro. Man, I appreciate y'all for supporting me. But it's 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 real crazy. I'm I'm about to jump onto another fight week. So wish me luck. That's all I gotta make sure I'm well rested, not not burning the candle on both ends. But shout out to Joey Spencer. I thought he looked awesome. His opponent was kind of weird. Like he he was doing weird shit, like stuff with his legs, and he was getting hurt every time Joey landed. Um, he just was no match. He had, he had like confidence at the weighing and stuff, but all that evaporated when he started getting touched. <laughs> and then Caleb Plant, like I said, I, I knew he had it in him, but he, he impressed. That's what I'm saying. I, like, I'm not, listen, that's a good, someone said PBC about to have you exhausted out here. Yeah, it, it's a good thing though. Is I just gotta manage it so I, you know, I can't. I don't want to be get sick or some shit because I'm not uh, doing no R and R. But it's just a lot of action back to back, and then a lot of it's PBC. It's just like nonstop fight after fight after fight. So I gotta make sure I'm ready for it. It's short, but it was a real good fight card. I mean. I can't think of the last Sunday card that was something like that. You know, I thought the Uzkadegi plank was a really good fight. Very good chess match. Uzkadegi, he just, there's an element of danger as long as he's in front of you. He was, he was like barely missing and whizzing by even early in the fight with some shots. But Caleb's defense is on point. Very good movement. So shout out to plant. He did his thing. I knew he had it in him, but now the world knows, and he's a champion. A lot of good fights at, at 68 for him. Chris Eubank, James DeGale, they're about to fight on ITV. That's at 168, isn't it? It was on Fox or FS1, one of the two. Chris Eubank and DeGale, that's at, that's at 68, ain't it? 
because that you know that's an option. David Benavides, if he gets back on track, you know, gets a win, maybe gets a belt. You know, it's kind of game plant too. It's definitely an option. Uh, it's 68's looking bright. Who else said 68? I feel like I'm leaving some people out. I feel like there's a new, like some new guy. I don't know, you know, I gotta just rest because I don't know, I'm probably not thinking clear. Anyway, holla at the boy. I just wanted to tap in with y'all. Rigging out looked good. I mean, it was not much to judge. He got a first round knockout, but he was, he was that left. He just looks better at his normal division, 122. But anyway, I'm, I'm about to peace out. Holla at me, man.